Hello and welcome to Nunia Sir's English classes. Today we'll study the sixth and last poem of grade 12. The title of the poem is Aunt Jennifer's Tigers. It's written by Adrian Rich. Adrian Rich, the poet. Her full name was Adrian Cecile Rich. She was born in 1929 and died in 2012, almost at the age of 82. She was an American poet, essayist, and feminist. She was feminist. She used to speak for the rights of women very boldly. She used to champion and advocate the equal right for women. She was called one of the most widely read and influential poets of the second half of the 20th century and was credited with bringing the oppression, suppression, troubles, and all these points happening with the women and lesbians to the forefront of the poetic discourse. Whenever there was some poetic conference or table talk and she was invited, she used to speak very boldly and raised her voice against the bias for women. In this poem also we'll have the reflection of the same spirit. So in Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, a woman expresses her suppressed feelings through her artwork. She is doing something. She is doing needlework, making embroidery and weaving some patterns of jumping tigers and all. But all these things are very symbolic because her art is nothing but the desire she wants to realize. Aunt Jennifer is the victim of male-dominated society. She has no one to share her mental and physical pain with. She makes a picture of graceful and powerful tigers to convey her deep feelings. Rich, the poet, vividly shows the weaknesses of women and the clout means influence, clout and authority of male in the marital life through the image of Aunt Jennifer in the poem. Suppressed and oppressed, Aunt Jennifer wishes to be powerful and strong within, like the tiger in her art, but she fails. The stout means strong, an impressive image of a tiger in the artwork of Jennifer contrasts with Jennifer herself. How it contrasts? The tiger is the symbol of strength, pride, elegance and independence. On the other hand, Aunt Jennifer has none of these qualities. But Jennifer is, on the other hand, is weak, meek and dependent on her husband. The poem is powerful and generalizes the plight of all suppressed women of the world. Now let's see the explanation of the poem. First of all, we'll see the rhyme scheme of it. So in rhyme scheme, I won't go into the detailed mechanism. The reason being I have given complete detail in the first poem itself. I, I'll be talking about and coming uh, will be coming directly to the main point. Screen and green, you see, they rhyme each other. Tree and certainty, they rhyme to each other. Tree ends in E and certainty again ends in E sound. So the rhyme scheme over here is A, A, B, B. Moving to next one, we will find wool and pool rhyme to each other. By the way, in wool, we have elongated sound of long oo sound, whereas in pool, we have short oo vowel. But as per the poetic license, we need to elongate the sound of pool too, so that they can rhyme to each other. So when we recite this poem, we need to just pronounce P-U-L-L -L as pool, not pool. So wool, pool, Band and hand rhyme to each other, just like stanza number one. The rhyme scheme of second stanza two is A, A, B, B. Moving to third one, let's find out. Lie and buy rhyme to each other. Made and unafraid, they rhyme to each other. So, the rhyme scheme of all the three stanzas is the same. That is A, A, B, B. We can see. This poem is having 
consistent rhyme scheme that is a a b b now let's read the poem the opening stanza reads aunt jennifer's tigers prance across a screen aunt jennifer is doing some needle work either she is making some tapestry weaving some woolen panel or she is doing some needle work on a canvas whatever the case may be but on that in that her artwork she is making the patterns of tigers which are prancing jumping tigers prance tigers jump across a screen screen that canvas or that tapestry or woolen panel aunt jennifer is weaving you can see in this picture over here the woolen panel when ladies weave sweaters they knit sweaters so they create different types of the designs aunt jennifer is doing the same thing she is creating the designs of jumping tigers now the description of tigers is given in the upcoming lines bright topaz denizens these tigers are bright topaz in color their color is bright yellow topaz is a yellow colored precious stone and they are denizens denizens inhabitants citizens means they live where do they live in a world of green world of green forest they live in the jungle their color is bright yellow like topaz they do not fear men beneath the tree beneath under when they are under tree under tree means what when they are in jungle they are bold and courageous they are fearless and enough unafraid even they encounter human beings they are not afraid of them we can see the same in the second picture in first picture tiger is jumping this is how aunt jennifer is creating the patterns she is making the pictures in second picture we can see the tiger is crossing the trail and two vehicles full of men they are on parking they have been parked and tiger is not the least afraid of them just going in a very peaceful and elegant way they pace they stand for, stands for tigers they pace in sleep when tigers are in jungle how is their behavior they pace they walk in a sleek in a very smooth chivalric in a very heroic chivalric heroic and elegantly certainty confidence they walk very smoothly they are not in hurry at all and the moment they walk in it's a you know that we can say looking at them walking is a treat to behold their walking manner is really a treat to behold they move on elegantly just like hero and full of confidence second stanza aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool when she is making that woolen panel she is making a tapestry her fingers are fluttering fluttering trembling they are shaking now adrian rich is trying to bring out the plight meet it out to the women the troubles tortures miseries and pains suffered by the women and all these sufferings and pains are related to the married life married life has taken a huge toll on the life of women and they are reduced to very inenergetic creatures so in energetic they are they can't cross even ivory needles knitting needles through the woolen panel which even a 2 3 year old young child can do they fail in that or they are facing a lot of trouble in doing that that's why fingers are fluttering aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool when she is making that woolen panel her fingers are trembling because she finds it very hard and very difficult find even the ivory needles hard to pull ivory needle especially needles ivory means something which is made up of tusks two long uh, structures which just are projected so 
from the mouth of elephant male elephant we can say known as tusk in hindi we call them hathi ke daant so these knitting needles are made up of ivory tusks so as a result they are very smooth very sleek very smooth even then aunt jennifer finds them to pass through the woolen panel it is a very tiresome job on the part of aunt jennifer such an inenergetic she has been the massive weight of uncle's wedding band and what has been the result behind of all that being inenergetic weak and fragile why has she been reduced because of what has she been reduced to be weak and fragile that uncle's wedding band uncle's wedding band means the responsibilities of married life responsibilities of married life are so much on the shoulder of aunt jennifer that she has become very weak and fragile sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hands the responsibilities the burden of the married life responsibilities is so much on the shoulders and on the head of aunt jennifer that she has become very weak very fragile very inenergetic and drained of energy when aunt is dead now moving to the last stanza adrian rich tells that when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie like anybody else the body will lie on the ground still ringed with ordeals but something different something is different in this case of aunt jennifer her hands are lying in a terrified way they are terrified and they are still ringed with ordeals ringed they are surrounded by they are bound by what ordeals the difficult situations miseries pains and troubles she suffered throughout her life she was mastered by whatever the pains the miseries troubles and atrocities she faced throughout she underwent throughout her married life they have clung to her even after death though we believe that generally our pains our miseries last up to our last breath when we die we get free from all these shackles all these bondages but adrian rich the poet says that in case of aunt jennifer the things are just different these pains are not going to end with the end of her life rather they will travel along her and will trouble her even in her after life next life also means those miseries and pains are so deeply stamped on her soul not only her mind and body so deeply they have penetrated her life and they are so strongly impressed on her soul that she won't be able to get rid of them even after her death the tigers in the panel that she made the creatures she created by the way the creator has gone there must be some influence and impact on the creations but adrian rich says that the tigers that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid the life and the activities of these tigers won't be influenced in any way death of aunt jennifer won't hamper the routine of these tigers so this is how she tries to bring out the plight of women means we can see when woman dies in the society her death doesn't impact the social routine it goes on unhindered it goes on incessantly it goes on continuously if some person dies some male counterpart dies then the things come to stand still for time being but when the woman dies no one cares this is what adrian rich wants to bring out to the readers 
now we'll see the critical appreciation with the help of the poetic devices this was the surfacial explanation of the poem now let's see the poetic devices in the deep understanding of the poem so we can see over here that seven eight poetic devices are used in this poem and we'll try to just find first example of alliteration and the first three poetic devices mentioned over here alliteration consonants and assonance all these are based on sound only repeated pattern of the sound makes alliteration consonants and assonance happen in the poem so first of all let's see the example of alliteration so wherever you can find the red letters they are the examples of alliteration as i told that these three poetic devices are based on the sound so don't go for the spelling of the words rather go for the pronunciation what is the first sound that should be counted so first example is in the last line of the first stanza itself sleek chivalric certainty and in this we find say sound repeated three times sleek then chivalric ch is pronounced as sh over here that's why and certainty so this is example of alliteration moving to next weight and wedding they begin with the w sound repetition of w sound is there then her terrified hands in the last stanza first line this is the example then still and she and they create alliteration then with an words they begin with w sound again alliteration and in the last line we can see prancing proud so p sound is repeated that's why alliteration is there next one is consonants so now we'll be counting the green letters wherever you find the green letters there are the examples of consonants in consonants in alliteration we count the repetition of consonantal sound but those consonantal sounds come in the beginning of the words in consonants also we count the repetition of the consonantal sounds but those consonantal sounds are either from the middle part of the word or at the end but not from the beginning if it is from beginning it is alliteration if it is from middle or at last any place other than beginning then it is consonant so we can see over here aunt jennifer and prince and screen in all these four words na sound is repeated which is example of consonants coming to next is tigers and across and screen again three times re sound is repeated this is again example of consonants and moving to next we'll find that aunt jennifer second moving to the second stanza aunt jennifer fingers and all that you can find even find even and then needle all these have na sound repetition of na sound then upon aunt and jennifer and hand four times and sound is repeated so all these are the examples of again in last stanza and first line we can see this da sound is repeated in dead terrified and hands so da sound is repeated and the same way in last line also da sound is repeated so these are the examples of consonants moving to next is assonants in assonants there is repetition of vowel sound it may be in the beginning of the word middle or end anyway if vowel sound is repeated that creates assonance so we can see this bluish words over here fear beneath and tree so long e elongated e sound is repeated moving to next the fourth line of the first stanza in sleek chivalric and certainty four or five times the sound is repeated vowel sound repeated that's why these are the examples of assonance moving to next we can find that is massive and band a sound is repeated next line fourth line of second stanza sits heavily and jennifer three times e sound is repeated which is again the example of assonance and thus we just covered alliteration consonants and assonance moving to next is anaphora anaphora is the repetition of 
any word or any phrase in the consecutive lines and here we can see the example they the word they is repeated twice the first uh, third and fourth line they just begin with the word they this creates anaphor next is metaphor in direct comparison we can say so over one word was there bright topaz actually it is not visible the word is bright topaz this word bright topaz is used for the color of the tiger so this word is metaphorical in nature poet has used metaphor created a comparison in the color of the tiger and in the color of topaz next one is imagery so whatever the words used in this poem which we can visualize are the examples of imagery so we can see the tigers we can visualize the tigers then screen that woolen panel or tapestry then world of green that means jungle we can visualize that a lot of trees creating a forest and jungle and in this way men also men and tree all these things we can visualize and they are the example of imagery moving to next we can again visualize the fluttering fingers then wool is there then needle ivory needle we can visualize and uncle's wedding band wedding band over here it means the ring that we can visualize then if we just move to the next one so again tiger is there and tigers can be visualized so in this way these few examples are in the category of this imagery means the words used in a way which can create an image on our mental screen are the examples of imagery next is symbolism means some words are used to symbolize to mean something some objects when they give meaning some creatures and animals birds they give some certain meaning then they symbolize they become the example of symbolism so in opening stanza itself we see tigers tigers are and especially the jumping tigers tiger prancing across screen so these tigers symbolize the suppressed and oppressed desire of aunt jennifer next is uncle's wedding band this is example of imagery as well as symbolism uncle's wedding band symbolizes the responsibilities of the married life so these are the examples of symbolism next is pun pun means a word which gives double meaning still over here one word was there that was ringed this word ringed gives two meanings when we say ringed it means one meaning can be having ring on the finger aunt jennifer was ringed she was having that wedding ring on her finger so she was ringed another meaning ring means bound limitations restrictions she was restricted also married life had put a lot of responsibilities and as a result there were so many restrictions on the lady so this is also one of the meanings of ring so over here we understand ring in two ways that's why it creates pun moving to next and the last one is irony there is an element of irony also in this poem and the irony is the woman is creator of men and men are troubling her men are putting restrictions on the women means creations are troubling the creator on the other hand we should worship our source of life 
women are the source of life of male counterparts they are to be worshipped just like god and goddess they should be worshipped but the things are projected other way around in place of worshipping they are enslaved they are treated just like slaves creatures and animals so this is the element of iron and the last point about this point is the use of name in the first stanza and dropping the name of jennifer in the last stanza why so the first stanza begins with aunt jennifer's but the last stanza says the beginning line is when aunt is dead aunt jennifer is dead it's not mentioned why so the poet begins the poem with a specific person and then starts covering all the women of the world means the poem travels from specific to common so when the poem opens she is talking about a particular woman but by the time it ends the poet talks about all the women on the earth this is the universal theme or we can say the women are suffering from the bias so much that due to the troubles and restrictions of married life they have lost their identity name is dropped name is the symbol of identity you are somebody you have some identity in the society but when the name is dropped you become common not specific so they underwent so much of the restrictions that women lost their identities this is why the poem opens with the specific name of a lady but the name is dropped in the last stanza now moving to next we'll see the theme of the poem the theme of the poem as it is given out by the poet adrian rich is how the power of patriarchy controls women's forms but not their mind means patriarchal societies male chauvinistic and male dominated societies can control and they put restrictions on the physique of the women but they can't control their mind this is the theme which is brought out with the help of this poem by adrian rich the poem makes this point by presenting the wild interesting powerful tigers embroidered by aunt jennifer and contrasting them with aunt jennifer the oppressed wife all these tigers mentioned in the poem are the symbol of the desires which aunt jennifer wants to realize and one more thing in the opening line we can see if uh, we just go back this is very important point and we must remember this one in the opening stanza tigers represent tigers friends so these jumping tigers represent the suppressed desire of aunt jennifer but in the last stanza where we find that these tigers go prancing proud and unafraid over there these tigers are the male counterpart of aunt jennifer means they represent the men who and whose activities and routine goes on unhindered even after the death of aunt jennifer so tigers symbolize two different things mind it next is the message of the poem aunt jennifer's tigers is a statement of conflict in women due to a lot of troubles and pains and the restrictions on them they have become a split personality especially between the impulse to freedom and imagination
they are divided into two parts. Aunt Jennifer wants a life that she embroiders on the panel. What type of the life she wants? A life just like tigers in jungle means complete freedom. She needs power. She needs independence. She needs brave and bold decisions. She needs every type of the freedom. No restriction at all. That's why she wants a life that she embroiders on the panel. She wants a colorful, vibrant life which every woman should have the power to create. They must be given the right to create their own life and make their own life as beautiful as they can. There shouldn't be any restrictions on them. So that's all for today. We'll see you soon with the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.